Okay, we're recording. Please go ahead. All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. It is 6.34 p.m. on October 3rd, 2024, and I'm going to call the meeting of GOL to order. Uh, we're going to check in to make sure everyone can hear and be heard. We had some questions about that today, so let's check, uh, double check for everybody. Councilor Ate, are you present, and can we hear you? Oh, you were muted. You yes. don't even. Yes. Yes. George has gone on. I thought I was going to have a peaceful day. I should have known. All right. Thank you. Uh, Pat. Present. Thank you. Lynn. Present. And Athena, just confirming we can hear you as well. Thank you. Are you we, yes. we heard you before. I trust you. All right. Um, okay, everybody. So we are talking through today the legislative. Oh, wait. Let me, sorry. Let me go to public comment first. We do not currently have any members of the public with us. Um, just gonna make sure that I'm following the agenda. Um, all right, so moving next on the on the agenda is the legislative process guide. So this is something that was on our carryover memo and we are finally getting to it. Um, this is something that I know I looked at last year. Uh, last year? Yeah, last year as a member of TSO. Um, it was brought forward by a former counselor and um, has, as you can tell from the memo, uh, has, has taken some different iterations and uh, the document in, in your packet today is what we are uh, going to look at to see essentially what we are recommending it serve as for the council. Um, so, um, Shalini, counselor, former counselor Shalini Ball Milne was not able to join us today, but this was her um, her creation. And um, what we've talked about, I'm trying to think about how to how to frame this in the in the best way. One of the things that TSO talked about is how, what form the council would adopt this in, whether it's a rule change, whether it's a recommended guiding document that people can refer back to, or um, or something else. So altogether. Um, I think for the per Lynn, go ahead. I don't go. really know what I'm going to say next, so go ahead. All right. First of all, I think it's an outstanding document. I think she really did some good thinking about this, and uh, appreciate the fact that she, you know, took her two years on the her two terms on the council. What it brought up for me is we have several documents like this that are in committees that are processes, that are how do we do this stuff. And I wonder if we need to take our, we need to collect them all, okay? And we need to take our rules of procedure and because none of them are cast in stone, neither is this, okay? But we need to take our rules of procedure and add appendices so that wherever they might be referred to or be useful, in the rules of procedure, then somebody can look at them. And what I'm I'm trying to think about, how do we leave legacy for future councils so that they don't feel like they need to reinvent the wheel all the time? Now, having said that, there's some things in this document I would tweak, but I and I don't think we can ever adopt it per se, but we've never quote adopted um you know, how do we interview committees for committee appointments? How do we, we have. okay, maybe we have, but we, I know we haven't adopted the flow chart for how we do hearings when zoning bylaws are. Yeah. Yes. CRC did. They are. Okay, fine. Then we can adopt this and just say, we think this should be something we use, but I think we're going to spend a more, a lot more time about around adopting it, but even when we get done, I think we need to figure out how we collect all those documents in one place. That's all. Thank you, Lynn. Um, so I raised my hand because the conversation about if GOL adopts this or in what, what form it takes is one that we had at TS, if the council, excuse me, adopts this, um, is when we had at TSO. And that was where the bulk of my concerns with this came in, because this is, in my mind, a best practices document. It talks about things that would be really, really wonderful for people to do. My concern with anything 
that looks like adopting this as a required procedure is that this is extremely in-depth. And my concern is that it seems it, it's, it's, I don't want people to be afraid of bringing something forward to the council that then could be iterated upon and discussed and built because, and have it get shot down because they didn't follow the checklist. I think that there are so many steps to this that are more applicable to some projects than others, to, to some initiatives than others. Um, and I think that it's so easy to get bogged down in the weeds with this document on, does this apply to proclamations and resolutions? Does this apply to only bylaws? I would rather this serve as a guiding document for things you might consider versus hard and fast rules or, or, or a required procedure uh, or process, excuse me. That said, I do think that there are pieces of this that we could consider recommending as changes to the rules, but I am not in favor of adopting this as a required process at this time. Uh, Pat. Yeah, you said <clears throat> several things that I agree with. <clears throat> I am definitely not ready to adopt this. I think um, there are, as you said, Anna, some good in ideas in it. There was some good work done by Chalonet, uh, but it's overblown. It's gonna add more time to council meetings if, we, if it were followed exactly the way it is. The thing I see where it's important is it's, and some of it can be put together because it, it's really a guideline for how do you create a memo? What, what are the important elements of a memo? Um, and, how do, and how do you go about that? And I think that that's a really good historical thing for a new counselor to look at, and even some of us who have been on the council, because you know it could make our work better or it can make our work stronger. Um, but I absolutely am not willing to adopt this as it is. Uh, and I think there's, so I, I would love to, to go through it and think about what parts of it we like. And I know it was worked on for a long time, but that's part of the process. Things often get worked on for a long time and get changed or don't get voted through or, and those are things that we, we deal with. Um, so that's kind of my starting place. Um, I don't think the, particularly the prior, prioritization <laughs> rubric, I don't want to sit in a council meeting where we fill out our criteria sheet and then we debate it. Because a lot of this is very personal interpretation. Uh, of what even these words mean, but when someone is presenting or, or the idea of this is um, this is going to uh, affect low income people, somebody else says, no, it's not. And we're debating a debate before we even have the work to look at the, you know, and so I, I'm very hesitant and, and I have a, I'm questioning about this. So I'd love to hear from other people. Thank you, Pat. Athena? Gosh, I'm not usually the one to lose my unmute button. Um, so I I helped Sh Shalini work on this and I don't wanna speak for her, but I think I can um, speak to kind of how some of the, you know, I helped her um, move through some of the iterations and, and come up with this Thank final you. product. So, um, from, I can share my perspective if that's okay with committee members. I think part of the intent was um, to give residents a guide for a resident proposal for a new bylaw or other measure. Um, there's already a GOL document that guides the process for resolution, resolutions, proclamations, citations, and commemorations, but it's not very you know, we don't put it out there very much. And maybe that's a matter of communications rather than incorporating it into a guide. Um, but some some way to lay out to residents, here's how things work within the legislative process. That's a simplified, maybe it's like a flow chart, but it was difficult to put 
all of the possibilities into one document of how things might move through. If it's a zoning change, then it's got to take all these steps. If it's a bylaw, then it has to go to these steps. And if it has to do with, you know, a financial thing, then it goes to this committee and maybe also another committee. And so there's, you know, it gets very complicated. Um, so that's one of the goals was to create something that would be helpful for residents to bring measures to the council, but another maybe separate goal. So maybe there's a, a point at which these become two separate things or two separate appendices or something um, is to help guide counselors about what goes in their memo, what information is useful to present to the council as they are initiating a new measure, as they're bringing a new measure to the council. And then, um, and then some guidance for committees to sort of, you know, how to start to think about what, who might, who else might need to be consulted, you know, what kind of outreach has been done, are we including all the stakeholders, you know, um, I think that we've had conversations over the years at council meetings and in committees about the council's priorities versus staff capacity. Because there's nothing stopping counselors from bringing all kinds of things all the time. And um, we have a limit to how much we can get done because there's a, you know, a finite amount of council time we have. There's a finite amount of staff time and resources that we have. And so we had talked in the past, the council had talked in the past about how to gauge when some, when a measure is brought, if this is a priority for the council, if this is something that when it's presented, the council wants to decide to refer it and continue spending resources developing it, or if this is not something that we want to spend our resources on, then it shouldn't be referred. Because that decision, that initial decision to refer something, there's an implication that we're going to spend time and resources, and it's not always part of that conversation. So when um, this iteration, this last iteration of the guide was presented, um, Shalini, before that, Shalini had talked about, you know, is this a rule change? Is this a checklist that needs to be completed? And it didn't make sense to do it either of those ways. And so that's why it was brought forward as a guidance document with some ideas about how to incorporate that conversation, but not to have to go through a checklist at the council, not to have to agree on all of the criteria, but just as a way of thinking about is this a priority? Did we identify this as a town manager priority? Is this my priority? Because, you know, it was something I ran on on my campaign. It's really important to me. Um, and so including those kinds of considerations in the initial discussion was the intent. Um, so, you know, I think there's, like I said, maybe two parts to this that could be simplified. I agree that seven pages is a little bit cumbersome to be a, a helpful, useful guide and no criticism intended. I think there's so much, there's a lot of rich ideas within the guide, um, but to kind of boil it down to the essential elements to that will be most useful, I think could be done in potentially two separate documents. Um, so, so the conversation about how to adopt it, the committee can adopt it. And it's just a guidance document for the committee, just as the, um, the proclamations and commemorations, the FAQ was adopted, the flowchart for the zoning bylaw process was adopted by CRC. Um, GOL could recommend it to the council as a council guidance document. It doesn't have to be the law that this guide is used. It can just be a document that is helpful, hopefully. And um, Shalini, I remember her saying that it should be a living document and that as the council moves through time, it's still a relatively new council, that this could be improved upon over the years as we gain more experience about how things go and gather more information and feedback from members of the public and counselors about their experiences working through this legislative process. Thank you for letting me talk for several minutes. I'm grateful. Thank you. That was really helpful context, Athena. Thank you. Um, I think if, if folks are comfortable with kind of agreeing on the premise that we're looking at this as that sort of guiding document that GOL could could adopt or suggest to the council, but not have it be a checklist requirement, et cetera. I think that would help us in, in starting to go through the document piece by piece and deciding what is the most helpful, what we might move, how we might separate it out. Um, are folks comfortable moving forward under that assumption? 
I just want to make sure we kind of have consensus on that before. Councilor Ette? And I'm just going to close my door really quick. So I'm here still. Um, so when you say separated out, are we going to be splitting this into two parts where one would be more council facing and the other would be more public facing? What do you mean by sp splitting out? I'm gonna let Athena take that. I didn't. I didn't mean we had to. It was just an option. Athena, that was my. It was. It's just a suggestion. the 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 form that the guide is in now is in no means like uh, Anna and Lynn said, set in stone. Um, so the committee can do with it what it wants. It can scrap sections. It can turn sections into a flow chart instead. You can do one part of a guide or a guide for a public to propose and move things through the council process or you or and or you could do a guide for counselors to understand the legislative process. Um, one of the experiences that was shared at the end of the last council term that was surprising to Shalini when she was developing the guide and also members of the council when there was discussions about the guide um, was that um, bylaws and other measures need to be presented to the council in the form necessary for adoption. So there was a lot of difficulty around this with the waste hauler bylaw because there was a, a proposal for the specific bylaw wording change that was presented to the council because it had to be presented to the council in the, the form of a specific measure that could be adopted. It couldn't just, you can't just come to the council with an idea you need to have a tactile, you know, a words on a page. This is the changes that I want to see in the bylaw with the understanding that it's an iterative process. It goes through committees. There is, you know, different stages of tinkering, if you will, with uh, the bylaws and other measures before they come back to the council for adoption. And amendments can be made and recommended and suggested, suggested along that process. So, that was a that was something that really I think surprised counselors at the end of the last term because there wasn't an understanding, and there th that that something that specific has to be presented, and there was I think that created some miscommunication about what the ask was mm -hmm. and what and what the next steps were and whether or not the the council is married to the specific language on the page as it's presented. Um, because it feels also that when a counselor presents something that maybe members of the public feel that this is exactly what they want the council to adopt, and that's not how the process works. There's, you know, stages of revisions and recommendations from committees back to the council. Counselors can make amendments when it's on the floor. So the expectation that something is presented and adopted exactly the way it's worded is just... Um, it, may, it makes the process a little bit difficult when there is that misunderstanding about how it works. I think I said more than the answer to your question, did, but did I answer your question? <laughs> well, you definitely did, and I don't think any more than needed to be. I think um, I had asked about the guide, especially with some of the different topics that have come before the Council of Waste Hall being one of them, so that's very helpful. All right, so with that, um, I'm wondering if someone else would be willing to share because my computer has been glitching. Is that okay? Either Athena, Athena or Do Lynn. you want to or shall I? Thank okay. you, Athena, I really appreciate that. I had it pulled up already, Lynn. Thank you. Um, I do have it up. I just, my computer keeps doing funky things and I don't wanna lose it. Um, all right, so why don't we start piece by piece uh, going through and kind of, I think maybe the, the most logical way to do this is to take it, I don't know, part of me is thinking we we first kind of re-familiarize -familiar, re ourselves and then discuss the merits of each piece. The first kind of part is pretty clear. I don't necessarily know that that's, that's one that's right. under full debate, but. Um, Second. Go ahead, Pat. No, I the copy that I got off uh, share point was different. So I, I'm going to go in 
look for a second. It should um, be. It should be this. I, the I title is printed it from on the. the I printed it from the. Maybe it got changed and I didn't realize it. I'm it, sorry. I'm wasting our time about. That. You're fine. It's helpful to make sure we're all on the same page. Ten three. If you hear me saying, oh my gosh, stop. I'm not talking to any of you. I'm talking to my computer. I'm sorry. Uh, Lynn? I, they were, I know that. A oh, theme it is. Means well, somehow or other, I don't. Okay. What I printed out is a different version. You have the one up now that you need? I, the, key que the portion under key mm -hmm. questions is missing in what I printed. Okay. So I haven't seen that little thing. But I th think everything else is the same. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um athena do you think the section by section method of kind of just discussing substantive discussion on each section is the logical path lynn has a oh lynn had a hand up um i don't um i think that it might be helpful for the committee to consider what the goals are and then decide how best to achieve those goals and in what form makes the most sense that's the most helpful for the people that it's directed at. And um, I think, uh, you know, a, a paragraph overview is already, if I am trying to step into the shoes of a resident who was hoping to present something to the council as a measure to be adopted, this is already a lot of um, kind of jargon language. So I'm wondering, in my mind, I'm going, how, how do we make this simpler and easier to digest and clearer if the goal is to make it um, easier for residents to engage in the legislative process, if that's a goal? If it's a goal to use this as a guide that would be shared with counselors, then maybe an overview is more important. If you're trying to do both, then maybe it's two separate documents. So I think there needs to be maybe some reflection on this before you dive into just editing sections. Um, that makes and, sense. Um, so, which, which makes it tricky in a meeting because um, it's hard to you know pull a document apart and put it into new pieces. So one suggestion would be to um, ask a member to take a stab at it and bring it back to the next meeting for the committee to consider or or to have a conversation about the goals and how to achieve those goals. Um, those are my suggestions. All right. I think, oh, Lynn, sorry, go ahead. Um, I don't, it, I think we need to be realistic about how much time we have to spend on this, okay? Um, that's kind of like taking something out of the guide. <laughs> be realistic uh and so um personally athena i have no problem with the overview and if somebody is going to propose something to the town council i think they need to be able to they need to read something they need to understand this is serious business they have to be prepared and I mean, I actually probably, I might split the first paragraph and directly quote from the rules, directly quote from the charter, and then go, here's the purpose of the thing, of the, of the guide and so forth. And then as I looked at it, as I went through the various checklists, I might call them checklists for a purpose, like this is a checklist for the memo. This is a checklist for the committee to use. So it, it's not just a checklist for a sponsor. It's, you know, it's anyway, I, again, I want to be realistic. I don't think we have more than a, the time tonight and maybe a little bit of another meeting to spend on this. If we're going to try to do something before the end of the year, maybe we're not. So. So before we go to, Pat, I want to just recenter us. Pat, you're um. Please hold on to your comment because I do want you to make no it. No problem. No but, problem. But um, I think <clears throat> I do want to center us on. I think a goal and an outcome is is smart, and we can pick one, and we can save the other for 
a future for for a future GOL or for whenever there's for some reason a big gap. Um, I agree with Lynn. We know that we've got some things coming our way for GOL, so we we don't have unlimited meeting time. I do think that from, uh, I think centering one outcome or our first outcome, I'll frame it that way, as being a recommendation guide to future counselors or to counselors in general would be a good first place to start. I think down the road, it would be really helpful to have a resident engagement guide for folks who want to pitch something to counselors. But if, hypothetically speaking, if the counselors are all really well versed in this, um, someone who wants to pitch something will speak to their count a counselor, and the counselor can kind of guide them through this. So I think for me, the, that would be the priority based on just the, the discussion that we've already had. Um, I do think that it makes a lot of sense to, if we, based on where we get to today, to kind of send this out and have one or two people or have people individually not as a I, I'm very very clear individually I got you um uh go through and say which pieces they think would be helpful and we can do like we've done before um with the document combining when we come back to the meeting that could be something that we give as homework but still having that first discussion today I think is helpful um Pat yeah <clears throat> I think we do need to have a first discussion today I got um, kind of interested in um, one of us taking it and go, working through it. And my suggestion, and it's, and I'm not trying to play right now, I'm really making an honest suggestion, would be if Counselor Ette would be willing to do that. Uh, one, because he's new. And it, I think that things that I might skip over as important would be more available to you, you know, or more present for you. I don't know if that's true. So I would encourage, and and I have a lot of respect and appreciation for your precision around language and everything else. So I would love to see you do that. I'm not requiring it in any way. I haven't got that power, but I would like to see that. I, um, yeah, I going through this all, step by step, I, hmm. I also, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I am. I'm just, I'm frustrated by this document and the time it's already taking because I don't think it's that important. Thank you, Pat. Um, Athena. Um, thanks for letting me talk more. Um, I I um, I think that it. I agree that it makes sense to frame this more as a, a legislative guide for new counselors and. Pat, it was so kind of you to volunteer someone else to do work. For oh, I wasn't trying to. There was um, a reason. <laughs> um, but I I don't I I hope that the part that is directed at resident engagement isn't lost. And a and a resident engagement or a resident participation guide is something that I've had in the back of my mind for years. Um, and perhaps that's something that I can take and work with our new communications manager and put that together. But if there are, are ideas that we call from this legislative guide that maybe belong more appropriately in a in a guide like that, because a lot of the processes are, you know, you you bring you bring uh, something to a counselor and they sponsor it for you, or you go through the charter process. So maybe that needs less explaining in a guide, but it could be in a in a resident participation. Um, you know, an FA, FAQ or, or info page or something like that. That's a section I would be willing to work on individually, you know, or connecting with you and working with you on. So um, if that's something that the committee decides, I would be happy to do that, Athena. Um, Pat, was that your comment? You yes, that's okay. why I snuck it in. <laughs> Without me calling <laughs> on you, I know. Um, okay, so I... Um, I love that idea of a resident engagement guide, resident participation guide. I think at the end of that, it's something that whether GOL is helpful in that process to you or not, um, I think is is kind of something that you you know better than we do because I I also am struck by the the amount of clarification that we could potentially offer residents on getting support for issues that the council has no control over. Um, I think it's something that counselors kind of, or I'll, I'll speak for myself. I often feel stuck in a spot of, I can't change this. 
And I can all I, the best I can do is be a squeaky wheel about it. And then I just feel terrible being a squeaky wheel. So I, I think that the the idea of a resident engagement guide could be a huge in scope or could be more specific and, and targeted, but generally just wanted to add support for that concept. Um, and I think I kind of would defer to you as to whether it's something that makes sense for GOL to be um, have a hand in or whether it's something that you and communicate like however obviously I'm not asking you to do it I'm just I think I think you have, you know better than we do where that should come from um, in most ways and would be happy to defer to you on that um, to Pat's earlier point I I absolutely want Councillor Ette's uh, thoughts on this to be very clear. I also think there's a lot of merit to having the thoughts from the folks who have been here for a little while as well. The whole point is gathering all of the um, all the perspectives. So no one is going to get off the hook if I'm allowed to assign everybody homework. Um, sorry. And because I think there's also something to be said for folks, you know, Pat, Lynn, you both have brought measures forward to the council. You've written things, right? That's a different perspective that is really necessary in this process as well. So I think that there's huge merit in all of us looking through this from the different perspectives that we hold. Uh, and I would, I'd like to have that happen. Um, but if we are concerned about workload in the next two weeks, we can divvy this up uh, in sections. Lynn? Um, thanks. Um, I don't want to see this guide torn apart. I want to, if, if I, I'd like us to have the guide stay together as a guide. And then if there's pieces of the guide that can be, you know, pulled apart or used in developing a citizen's guide or something else, that's fine. But the guide itself really is meant to be comprehensive of how the legislative process works. And to to your other point, um, Athena, I mean, Anna, uh, I'm more than willing to take the Word document to, you know, put little side comments on it, either bring it to the committee or send it to somebody to compile those. Um, one of the things I just checked is that the, we have it in Word. And so we could, you know, do that thing we've done before where we make little comments off to the side or even add words in or just subtract words. Um, but I think the purpose of this guide is to provide guidance, but at the same time, at some level, there's a codification. And the codification isn't the questions. It's that in order to do this, here's the process. And then the questions become part of what we all should be doing. So I'm, I think the purpose of the guide is in fact to lay out the legislative process. And frankly, I think if you asked any seated counselor to fully describe the legislative process, they wouldn't be as thorough as this guide. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I want to make sure that I was clear. I'm not saying pull this guide apart at all. Uh, that's not what I was suggesting. I agree. This guide is incredibly comprehensive and I agree. I don't think anyone uh, on on this or the last council councils could have articulated all of this in one piece. Mm -hmm. That said, I think what I'm what I intended with what I was saying before was highlighting things that if we did create a second guide for residents would be helpful to go into it, not pulling anything apart right now. Um, so where I get concerned and where I'd like to, and I think Pat, I think I'm echoing what you were saying, but correct me if I'm misrepresent misunderstanding what you were saying. I really don't want this to be a checklist that people view as every single thing needs to be checked. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important. And, and I think our language as we present this is gonna be important. Um, so many of these things are really, really great to do and will strengthen any proposal, but they aren't always applicable to the extent that they are presented in this legislative process guide to every single thing that gets brought forward. And not all of them are checkboxes, right? Some of them 
could continue, some of them could be done in a small scope or a massive scope. So I think as we go through this, it's for me, it's really important that we are describing it as a set of recommendations for counselors to use to strengthen whatever it is that they want to bring forward um, or however they want to, to progress. Yeah, in that way. Um, just to, so that I can feel like we've made some sense of progress here. Um, what I'm hearing is that our our goal, our outcome is, and, and I'm cautioning myself here because I'm saying this is what I want and I want to make sure that I'm on board with everyone, that everyone else is on board with what they want. Um, our outcome right now from my notes are creating a set of recommendations recommended best practices for the legislative process. That sounds weird, but is that the direction that we're going? What what would people like to see as our outcome? And I'd like you to say the outcome in one sentence, please. No paragraphs. I know, but like I, we, need, we need to be able to write it down so that we're all on the same page. So what is our one sentence outcome of, of the work on this guide, Lynn? Recommended guidance. Okay. For the legislative process. Recommended guidance. Pat, thank you for going with my ask, even though I don't know that you like it. Um, any other ones? I'm, this is taking notes so that we can center on something. Yeah, no, I feel fine with what Lynn just said. Recommended guidance on the legislative process. Okay. Does that work for other folks in the virtual room. We are going to create a recommend, we are going to create recommended guidance, not create, Shalini. You know what I mean? We will end up with a document that outlines the recommended guidance on the legislative process. Does that? Could I hear from Councilor Ette? Yeah. Yes, because he raised his hand, Councilor Ette. That works. Um, the way I see this is frankly more like uh, Robert's rules um, in the sense that it's something that we can refer to. Yes, and, but not in the, oh, sorry. Yes, yes. So so not in some order. I'm, I'm specifically just interested in the fact that we can refer to this document. Yeah. Can I speak? Is that right? Go ahead, Pat. I want to encourage Athena to also be pulled in this because you've already worked on it. And if you, I would love to hear your thoughts on the regular as we go through this process, because I think they'd be really valuable. Absolutely. Agreed. Um, I could all right. If I wanted to. So you're going <laughs> to. Yes, if you want to. You're an independent, <laughs> strong woman. I figure, you know. <laughs> I hope everyone feels empowered to raise their hands if they have something to say on this on this committee and in life, you know. And sometimes don't raise your hand and just talk, but on this Zoom, please raise your hand. Um, all right. So with that, moving forward in, um, I'm going to say developing, even though we know we're not developing it, but we will end up with recommended guidance on the legislative process. Um, to that end, if that is our goal, let's agree on the process that we, <laughs> the process that we're going to discuss the process with. Oh, I hate this. All right. Um, so, I do think that it would be beneficial for folks to take some time with this document um, and go through it. Would it make? Does it make sense to say? We're going to have everybody download your own version of this. No one is working in the shared file that everyone can see. Everyone has to download it first. Um, and going through and um, track changing what you believe should be in that final, um, final recommended guidance. Part of me is thinking it would make sense to like even highlight the things that you want to emphasize, like highlight the things that you think are mo most important in that, but I'm that might be going too far. Athena? Um, would you put all of those together? Is I that, will. Is put, that what you would do? 
I would put all of those together. Okay. We've had, it's, it's, it becomes muddy when we have like five different versions right. of a guide going around and then we lose track of what the version that we're working on is. So if the intent is for you to collect feedback and then bring a, a new draft to the next meeting, that makes it a lot clearer. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, what we did um, in the, in we've done this before is uh, I use the like combine feature and everyone's comments show up with their name. And so it's it's still a little bit muddy, but it's, we're able to, to dig through, but we will be looking at one document, yes. Um, do folks have any alternative ideas to that or any shifts they'd like to see? Anything else you want us to do? So right now we're going through the document and we are, um, making edits as we as we see fit. Um, I'm going to ask that if you're making like major change edits where you're moving full sections, maybe make that as a note instead of um, totally moving everything just so that when we do combine it, we aren't getting totally lost. Um, I have spent the last like two months of my professional life building a workbook. And so my brain is a little scared of moving pages around. Um, Sorry, so, like trauma, trauma here. Um, so we're going to make any edits that we see in track changes. I still do think it might be beneficial for folks just to go ahead and highlight the things that you find most important to this. Um, for the purposes of our discussion, I think that might help center us if we start to get into a, a whirlpool. Um, so just highlighting text of if there are things that you particularly want to uh, emphasize, unless someone thinks that's a terrible idea. I am not the ruler of the world, despite all of my efforts. Um, Pat? I'm, <clears throat> I might need a little help with this. Are we talking about doing that right this second? No. Okay. I, no. I might I need a little, I have trouble using track changes okay. and on, and if there is someone who would be willing to meet with me for a few minutes, just I'm, to make sure I know how to do that. Okay. Athena's happy to, Athena. I'm happy to, absolutely. Uh, I was going to say, if we end early, I can call you. Like, we can just jump on a Zoom or no, something. No, I'm not going to do it on the phone. I got to do it in person. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm really bad with this stuff. You don't have to apologize. But thank you. Thank you. No problem. All right. Um, I, I feel that feels like we're done weirdly early, and, and I, I feel like I'm missing something. Can someone either validate my feelings that we've covered our plans going forward or say what they think I'm forgetting in this process? Lynn, I was going to. I was going to say, I see you looking hand. for your hand, so I'm just going to call on you. In in summary, I think what we've agreed to is yeah. we're keeping the document together. Yep. We're each going to go through it as a word document and either make comments off to the side or suggested language changes and highlight areas we think are really outstanding, most important. Make sure we keep this. And then we're getting that to you by a certain time so that yeah, when yeah, we meet like the next time, we will have, um, we will spend time on this. That is true. Thank you. Hearing you say it, I think I might take back my highlighting idea because it, it all is really important. And I think I might just end up with like seven pages of just highlight. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to take back that ask. Yeah, I'll I agree. Yeah. Pat? Oh, I was nothing. Okay. Um, I know that we have a lot of stuff actually. Oh, Athena. No? Okay. You raised your hand. I know. I can wait. Okay. I, I was shifting topics. So if it's on this, go ahead. I was, yeah, I was going to... Um point out some of the things that are coming up with for the committee, the upcoming agenda items. That's what I was going to do. Awesome. Um, would, <laughs> Great minds, or at least I was on your great mind wavelength for that time. Um, would you like to go ahead? Sure. So on the council agenda for Monday, there is a referral that's on the consent agenda to um, ask GOL to develop the town manager goals for 2025. Um, Hopefully that will be informed by a conversation at the council on Monday and you'll have some some direction to jump off. Mm -hmm. Lynn wants to say something else about yeah. that. I, the goal on Monday 
is to have the referral and maybe a little discussion. Next time GOL meets, we would discuss how do we want to get that feedback from the council? And then we would spend the meeting on the 21st getting that feedback. We'd send it out to people and so forth. So it's, um, I don't see us getting that feedback on Monday. Right. That's, all, that's my correction to what you said. Okay. Yeah. Then um, you also have the town manager evaluation process uh, as yeah. a referral that I think is going to be too late for this year. So that might be something that you can wait until next year because we've, we've already got the things rolling for that process yeah. to begin. So tweaking it at this point is a little late. Um, I think the next thing that will probably come to the committee is the transportation and parking commission charge. TSO needs to finish its review and recommendation and then it will come to GOL before council action. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have, there are some deadlines associated with the university drive overlay district, CRC and planning board need to hold their hearings. Um, they need to hold their hearings before the Thanksgiving holiday. And so GOL should be aware that as soon as their hearings close, then they will need to finalize their recommendations and GOL will have a limited amount of time to review and recommend um, any changes to the zoning bylaw before council action that council is required to act on it within 90 days of the close of the CRC public hearing. So that is a little bit of a, a time crunch once CRC closes their hearing. Then we also have a streetlight policy that's still in Paul's hands and the refuse collection and recyclable materials bylaw that's still in front of TSO. So those are still out there waiting for other committees. Thank what you. was that last one? Waste taller. Oh, okay, that's the show. All right, thank you. She used its government name. Um, Lynn, and then I got- We also have to do our carryover memo. Well, this is part of it. No, we, no, we only- don't we, we only, only do, do that at the, the end of the terms, right? Yeah. Okay. This is. I would love if someone week. else would like to chair GOL next year, so I don't have to. Do um, well, okay. the, well, the the council will reorganize in January, and then the president will make appointments to council committees. So your yeah. membership may change. True story. Okay. Um, thank you. I also um, have heard from a few councilors who are uh writing resolutions that will also be those will trickle through to us as well athena can i clarify the the last two things the transportation charge and the overlay district um those are both clarity consistency and actionability right neither of those are substantive yeah that's correct okay thank you um so um, but i'm sorry the it's clarity consistency and actionability but the transportation and parking commission charge is is another one of those that you want to make sure is in the form the format yeah 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 um, okay, thank you. So with the goals, just so folks know where I'm going with this, um, on my to-do list is, is okay, so what GOL has done in the past is sent a set of goals to the council based on the prior year goals that then the council can discuss versus having a 13 person from scratch discussion on what the town manager's goals should be. Part of our ongoing discussions about the evaluation process have been how challenging the goals are to evaluate. So um, what I'd like to do when we come together, I'm gonna try to create some sort of structure for us to have that discussion so that we're not just taking the same goals from last year uh, and bringing them forward from this year. So there's no action your part needed right now. It's just something just to let you know what um, I'm hoping, where I'm hoping to go with that discussion is to have those end up in a bit more of a uh, actionable place, actually. I think we need to clarity, consistency, and actionability are our own goals, and I don't think we have ever really done that. Um, and I think that's all I had to say on that. So I am going, yeah, Lynn. I have a clarification. I, I believe that the CRC and the planning board have to open their hearings before December, but they don't have to close them. That's correct. They have to open their hearings before the Thanksgiving holiday. They might be open for several weeks before they decide to close their hearings. And then that clock starts ticking for the 90 day council action. So as soon as the hearings are closed, then uh, CRC will be somewhat pressed to make their recommendation and report and get that to GOL for review so that council can act within 90 days. Yeah, it's not us acting within 90 days. It's the full council. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, any questions on upcoming agenda items or anything that we missed that folks know? There are a couple of resolutions um, in November, yeah. early November. I can't remember what they are right now, but they're yeah, in you the packet. And yes. I think there was one for this month also, but somebody would need to be contacted. It was uh, Indian cultural or something like, I can't remember. I just got an email about that about a half an oh, hour ago. Good. Um, so I will, uh, I'm going to take a look at that and, and see if I want to sponsor it. If anyone else would like to. Uh, um, the other thing is um, we never quite know what else might be put on our plate, but I, I want to keep working on this legislative uh, guide, uh, but we, but it doesn't have as much impact importance as the town manager goals in that whole not the not the creating a new process but the actual writing of his goals and getting you know all of that mm -hmm. so if this were to slide some into the beginning of the year of the new year i think that would be okay uh, and i'd like to start it now and we are but I, you know. it's possible that that will happen pat um this this has taken the brunt of being a back burner project. Uh, initially, this was on my timeline for April um, and it's October. So I, I, I hear you. And um, and I know that this isn't an urgent project, but I think it's an important one. It's an important one. And yeah. And so I um, I'm keeping it on here. But yes, when things are more time bound, they are taking um, taking precedent. Any other questions? George is gonna be so mad that we've ended now two meetings early when he hasn't been able to join us. Um, <laughs> what I would like folks to do, I mean, do whatever you want with your with your bonus hour if we end now, but, um, but I still would like, I'm still going to plan on at our next meeting, circling back on this discussion. If we get majorly, um, majorly upset we will get majorly upset we'll spend the bulk of the next meeting talking about goals but i'd like us to spend some time circling back to this in our next meeting um if that sounds good to everybody yeah all right so next meeting we'll do goals and legislative process uh unless something else pops up in the meantime we Lynn. may have one or two um uh, proclamations or re resolutions by our next meeting i've been I've been warned that there's probably one coming. For Are Monday? You... No, 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 no. no not this for will Monday. be for our next meeting. Oh, but you'll five, refer them to us before the they're going to council, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, well, yes, we will have at least one because I really need to get that done. And I've been warned that there's another and you just mentioned a third. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, great. It's going to be good. It feels so bad to end early when we know we've got brutal ones coming up. Athena, will you stay on for a minute? And I'd like to figure out a time to meet with you. That's convenient for you. And Ate, I'm going to call you about tomorrow. Okay. No one leave. We need to make our full motion and do our full process. I Everybody move can... that we adjourn. Oh, Second. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. I'm going to call the vote. Pat. Aye. Councilor Ate. Aye. Lynn. Aye. And I am an I as well. Thank you all very, very much. I look Thank forward you. to seeing all of your suggestions. Um, oh, shoot. I will email you. Okay. Because we adjourned and I never gave you a deadline. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Yeah. Athena.